Cut, cut this out. out. Yeah, cut this part out. <laughs> we're about to have so many enemies throwing rocks to our window. Oh. We were going way too deep down that rabbit hole. You're like, yeah, f you were shop. I kept all the back line. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to another video. It's Brandon from Tattooing 101, and today we're going to go over a subject that, you know, every tattoo artist deals with, be it on a daily basis, weekly basis, depending on where you are, and that is hard clients. And by hard clients, I mean hard to work with clients. So on that subject, we're going to go over what to do with, you know, clients that are, you know, a little bit harder to work with, you know, the process of how to make things a little bit easier for you, and the clients that you just can't make happy, how to go about telling them to kick rocks in a nice way. So with me, I have my wife, Waylon. Uh, she's going to give a brief background of her tattoo life story. So when she started and all that good stuff. So I started tattooing around six years ago, and I started at a really young age. I was 19 when I started my tattooing apprenticeship. So very quickly, I was thrown into tattooing and dealing with clients is a big deal because they literally will make or break you. Um, they literally pay your bills. Literally. So yeah. it's a respect. I love and appreciate all my clients. Um, and then there's some that are a little tricky, but I love them anyways. There's some that are just, you can't make happy and they might may not be the client for you or they may- Do you still love them? You would say love? Your hard clients, you would say love? I mean, I guess, I guess yes. they are your clients. Absolutely. Well, some of them I've been tattooing for years, yeah. and it's like they're still difficult, but you know what? We get there. But, but there are some that are not your clients, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you don't. There's like some that's that. like, I would like to be her client, but it's like. So now everyone watching this right now that you're not replying to right now is be like, wow, they know what's up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. What's up now? Awesome. So as a whole, what would you say, and I'll give my advice on, you know, any of these subjects after you, but uh, what would be your best advice dealing with a hard client? So let's do a little scenario. I come in wanting... Uh, Coming in and getting something that I don't do regularly. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So I want a vape tattoo because I'm actually trying to quit vaping and it is hard to do. So I want a vape tattoo with a little x crossed out around it and then you know all seven of my kids names i only have two kids but incorporated yeah. in yeah yeah time. and i i only want it you probably want it like this small too like no. their, their names no no i want it the size of a vape but i want their names in the vape and banners i'm gonna say okay and flames <laughs> stop <laughs> how would you deal with that um i would draw it up would you and do my best yeah i would okay. um i guess i don't know okay what i would do with my crazy story would be like you know from an artistic perspective i understand that's a really great story behind it you know uh vaping is very hard to but quit. it's not a good look um but it just wouldn't work you know through time the Lines are going to get thicker underneath the skin with the natural healing process of the tattoo. And it's just going to all become one and you're just going to have, you know, a blob of a vape tattooed on you forever. Or you could simplify it, do the vape outline, yes. and then do their names in the inside. But seven kids, that's like we may have to go a little larger. Or just don't get your kids' names tattooed on you. Or just don't do that. Or that. But, but yeah. your kids' names? Well, yeah, but if you have seven... You know, you might have eight, and then you have to get another tattoo. Just wait until, you know. Wait until you're done. Just hold off. Um, but yeah, all jokes aside, there are some crazy tattoos that come through the door, and that's not even as crazy as that might sound. Mm -hmm. So you do get crazy tattoos that come in all of the time, and it is really important to kind of, like, know your way without hurting someone's feelings. So, like, yes, yeah, someone quitting vaping, you know, they might be on edge and then come hostile. So that goes on to the next subject of hostile clients, um, which I've seen my fair share. I've had people light money on fire. Um, what? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I Why say, do I not know about this? Oh, you've heard this before, 100%. Oh. But um, it was like 12 o'clock at night when I was working at a shop, and they came in belligerently drunk. Oh, yeah. And I sat there, you know, I was low man on the totem pole. 
Um, so obviously I had to sit there and talk to this dude. Um, the other artist went up, tried to get him to tattoo, and he was like, no, I'm just going to push it off to him because that's annoying. And uh, I went up, talked to the dude, and I was so nice for so long. I'm talking like, we closed at 12. It was like 1230, and I was like, you know, what are you looking to get? He was like, I'm a millionaire. I have money. It doesn't matter. I got, you know, whatever it costs, I'll pay it. And I was like, you know, I'm broke, you know, so yeah, let's get some money. Um, so we look at some stuff and then it occurred to me that he is not going to get tattooed. He's just drunk. And obviously you don't want to tattoo a drunk person anyway. Have we done it? Absolutely. I've never tattooed a drunk person ever in my life. You know what? Okay, so the amount of bullshit that you have to do in the beginning of your apprenticeship, it's like you are so broke. If you're coming in the door, I'm doing it. Yeah, no, for sure. But um, it gets to a point to where you understand that this person's not wanting to get a tattoo. So it got to that point, and I was like, hey, man, if you want to come back tomorrow, I'll be able to have time to draw something up for you. Immediately, something clicked in this dude's brain. And, like, you know, it was from cool drunk dude to not cool drunk dude and he was like you know i'm a millionaire i can do whatever i want just acting reckless and i was like man you got to get out of here um you know because we don't mess around with stuff like this he goes outside starts lighting money on fire i didn't know what the bills were at the time obviously because i was like inside i didn't want to you know him to catch me on fire so he goes through his trunk a couple times and i was like we're all about to get shot um, luckily there was no firearms involved, but, uh, it was a super sketchy. Everyone was like, what is going on? Should we call the cops? Should we not call the cops? So we kind of just sat there and watched like it was, you know, a TV show for like a, a while. train wreck. You yeah. Just... They just, you know, you just watch it happen. Um, and eventually he leaves, you know, after lighting this money, throwing it on our grass in the front, um, he leaves and we were like, okay, well that was exciting. Now it's time to go home. And when we were packing up, this dude literally drove back just to pick up his half-burnt dollar bills because he didn't pick them all up. We went outside, and for this billionaire, they were only dollar bills. There was no 20s, no 5s, because trust me, I was trying to find any spare change that this dude might have left. He was trying to make a statement. Yeah, but the only statement he made is that he is definitely not a millionaire. Um, Because if he was, and if you were trying to get tattooed, have a tattoo idea ready. And don't he would be paying tattoo artists to come to like his house and do a private a private sure. thing if you were a million I know I would me too yeah because the comfort the of comfort your of your own home yeah and no we're not saying tattoo out of your house no. so that's not you need a not. sterile environment for all that good stuff but, um, but famous people do it yeah because you could literally have a legit tattoo studio in your house if you have money for it yeah you know, absolutely like, um so yeah after that story do you have any crazy stories? You just, you know, been lucky. I'm sure you have a crazy story. I'm sure I do. This put you on the spot. Let me see. Let me hear one. Okay, so this one guy, this is awful. (laughs) This one guy came in, him and his wife, and they had just gotten married. I'm pretty sure that night, if not Mm. like the day before. And they were just like ecstatic to be in there. And I think they were probably drinking also. But it's like one of those things, like we said, you just kind of do it. And um, they wanted to get the dates that they got married. And so I was like, okay, sure, I'd love to do it. And I'm getting them, you know, drawn up. And then we're back there and I'm getting them on the client. And he's like the entire time trying to like guess what size bra I wear. What? And it was the most uncomfortable situation me being the artist that I am now, I would have immediately shut it down and been like, we're not doing this. But back then being so young and naive, and the first thing I'm doing is like eyeballing his wife, just uncomfortable. And she was like into it. She, was, she was she was there for that it. Is wild. Yeah. <laughs> she was there for it. Yeah, we're but gonna... after years of tattooing, you almost... I hate to say that you can be picky, but you can you can pick and choose your clients. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I've I've never had anyone try to check my bra size, um, but I've had tons of stories about you know crazy things happening, and that's that's a big subject that we need to talk about next is what to do 
if you do have a rough client, like how do you go about nicely saying, I don't mess with you anymore. So how would you go about that? I know any single tattoo artist out there watching this video right now, you have gone through either a very not good way of telling someone that you don't want to mess with them or politely expressed in a beautiful manner, kick rocks, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Well, regardless, they're going to get their feelings hurt because... Yeah. Not always, though. You could be a no, really yes. good talker. No, I think they would they would go home and get their feelings hurt immediately. Because I feel like you want to be friends, you want to be cool with your tattoo artist, and you want to appear to be cool, but some people you're just not cool with. You don't get along well. Some people just aren't cool. That's just what it is. That's what it boils down to. But I feel like... No, you're all cool to me. That's all that matters. My thing is, I feel like you just got to be honest. Yeah. You know, like just some like some hairstylists aren't going to be for you. They can't do the hair yeah, that you true, want them true. to do. Yep. You may not be able to do the tattoo that I want you to do. Yeah. Or maybe if you're too difficult or if it's just out of my realm, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. And I just, hey, sorry. Yeah. Okay. But that doesn't really stop them being a client, right? You're just telling them they can't do the tattoo. So what if they're like, okay, you're right. I don't want that realism face. I want this face done in your style. Then what? Then you just told them, oh, this is my style. Now you're stuck. Now you have to take this client on. Okay, addressing the situation like canceling a client. Huh? I feel like you have to do it in person, first of all. You can't do it over the phone. Uh, no. No? You call them all day, text them, whatever. You would? 1,000. Oh, no, not me. I want like the eye contact. But why? So they know I'm serious. Because text messages could easily be, like, misled and... Yeah, no, 100% with that, but are you willing to waste more of your time to express to this person, to stare them down in the eyes and let them know <laughs> you are not the client for me? I guess it depends. If we're, like, texting back and forth and something's not being, like, addressed well, yeah, I would just be like, I'm sorry, I'm just not the tattoo artist for you in general. Yeah, no, that's that's perfectly fine. I was just trying to, uh, you know, be... I don't know what it's called. But like the Is it more aggressive to like want to no, stare someone no, in the no. eyes and say, I'm not tattooed? Well, yes, absolutely. If you're like staring them down and like, yeah, that's probably, that could come off a little aggressive. Like, okay, so I had a woman come in over the weekend and she has shorted me on cash before, yeah. you know this. 100. And I've been kind of like collectively wanting her to come back in the shop to like let her down easily, like just so you know, like this will never happen again. I don't accept clients like this. She came in and wanted me to look at a piercing. I don't even do piercings anymore. Our shop does not do them. And I was just like, politely, whether it's a tattoo question or a piercing question, go to the following tattoo shop yeah. down the street. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. For sure. I was like, I don't have any, I can't answer your, your questions, mm -hmm. just go on down to the, you know. Yeah, and there's, like I said, a ton of different ways to handle this. Obviously, I'm at the point in my career that if I don't feel like it's going to be a client for me, I don't even, I don't have the time to go meet them and stare them down um, to let them know that it, it's it's not the right fit. I'm just going to let them know, you know, um, I am focused on bettering my style of artwork, not, you know, I want to be able to do the things that I want to do. And I have plenty of clients right now that let me do that. Um, that I don't believe that, you know, this is going to work. I know plenty of tattoo artists that would be, you know, great for you. And then I just let them know the clients, let them know the tattoo artists that um, I feel like would have fun with a client like that. Yeah, so when it comes to bad clients, everyone goes through them. And there's tons of different ways to go about them. Um, so with your best advice for people first getting into tattooing what would your advice be if they are not having many tattoos and they are just getting these quote-unquote bad clients what what would your advice to them be oh just to stick it out yeah. honestly because the more years that you progress, the better clients that you're going to get, the better quality that your tattoos yep. are, the better clientele you're going to bring in. So realistically, stick it out. Keep perfecting your art as much as you can. Just work hard on that, and the good clients will come, and then you will appreciate them. 1,000%. That's the yeah. best advice ever because when you first start out, you are 
hungry. You know, you can't survive on ramen noodles forever. Um, even though I still eat them all the I time. I say you still yeah, do. Love them. But um, yeah, you just have to do it when you first start out. As annoying as it is, as frustrating as it is, putting on that stencil six different times, 20 different times on that one client, it's something you have to do. And when you're first starting out, those little practice things help you become a better, better artist anyway. Um, but at some point, dealing with that really puts a stress on your mind, you know, just going through all these clients. Well, because doing... they're almost like some clients will just micromanage you yeah. and then it almost makes every time they come in, it's like a stressful situation, like it's extra work. Yeah. And I do not like to go into my tattoo appointment stressed at all. I want to have an yeah. idea going, a drawing going. And if someone's micromanaging it, I feel like they, there's no trust in me. So the trust is. Yeah. You need trust with the tattoo artist. Yeah. You need to build that bond. And, you know, pretty much all my friends now, I've tattooed them at one point. So I didn't know them from Adam, Adam and Eve when I first started tattooing them. And then just through tattooing them, I've learned so much about them. You know, I obviously learned a lot about how they deal with pain. Um, along with things about their lives and everything, but it's important to have a connection with your clients. But, um, you know, there's also a great subject we could do on a future podcast is when that boundary is overtaken, you know, clients, you know, trying to just go full force and become your buddy when, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to tattoo we are a business. Um, we can't have a ton of hangarounds just hanging out at the shop, but That'll be a subject for another time. And as always, if you guys have any content that you would like me to go over in a podcast or a video, make sure you leave a comment down below so I can check it out. Make sure you sign up to our email list too, to where we have tons of tattoo knowledge we put out every single week for you guys. And I would like to thank Waylon, my wife, for coming on this podcast and going over some of these subjects with me. And as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.